So the biggest theme of our research was that there's a pervasive lack of system design in intervention efforts. We think that a system approach has the potential to address some of the barriers to success that are being faced by efforts around the country. It can help with coordination and collaboration and help spread promising practices around communities. One of the things we did in our innovation work was speak with communities around the country. We talked to police commissioners, EMTs, healthcare, public health, and identified some gaps that we think are, are holding some communities back. Things like uh, not having health care at the table in community coalitions, not having law enforcement at the table, really not having the right people who all need to be working together. We did also see some really interesting bright spots. Right here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, there are narcotics detectives who are serving as case managers whose job it is is to help people who are addicted to opioids in their communities. We've seen a lot of drug courts and treatment replacing incarceration. And an interesting story that we heard is a medical examiner who was providing a feedback loop back to providers after a patient had passed away from an opioid overdose. So after they passed away, the HIPAA laws changed and they were able to provide that information back in an interesting new way. So there are definitely bright spots around the country where people are capitalizing on existing resources and seeing positive outcomes. With a community approach, it's really important to understand the geographic variation that's associated with the epidemic. Um, this map shows just one of the ways in which the epidemic looks differently across the country, and there are other ways that it varies as well. Um, one example that uh, we thought was really interesting from Maine, the type of opioid use varies based on the season. So Maine is one geographic area. But seasonally, there's variation as well. So in lobster season, when there is more disposable income, pills are the preferred opioid because they're viewed as safer. But in the off season, when people are still addicted, they end up using heroin because it's cheaper. So really understanding the geographic variation in context is important to success. And one other thing that we wanted to look at was different categories of population. So a system approach needs to think about how we take into account the different populations that are affected by this crisis. And we think that there are four broad categories that need different types of intervention to happen simultaneously. There's the naive patient uh, for whom avoiding starting is the most important. There are high dose chronic users who are within healthcare and need to be compassionately tapered and move to alternative pain management. There are people who are opioid dependent but still seeking within healthcare. And then there are people who are opioid dependent and now seeking opioids outside of healthcare. And so while these categories can be fluid, it's important that we think about turning off the faucet while also emptying the bathtub and really targeting population specific interventions. So based on these gaps and the need for a system wide approach, our theory of change calls for this coordinated collaborative community wide approach. And Lindsay will talk a little bit about what that looks like. Thanks, Mara. Lindsay. So we put together, and I think you're seeing on the screen right now, a system view for the prescription opioid pathway, thinking about individuals who start in the outpatient setting, recognizing that individuals may start um, using opioids in a variety of settings, but looking at, at you know a person starting on the upper left hand screen, if you're looking at the WebEx right now, we know that a person w may have pain and that they're often prescribed um, opioids, if their provider, their primary care provider, their dentist, we know that 15% of the opioids in the United States are prescribed through dentist or a specialist provide, uh, prescribe that prescription. There is a variety of appropriate times that these medications are prescribed and individuals use them and uh, have pain relief and then move on. Unfortunately, we know that it takes somewhere between 7 and 90 days for opioid dependency to be created. And some individuals can get caught in a dependency loop within the healthcare system where although they were prescribed opioids for a healthcare reason, they become dependent and then begin to seek opioids within the healthcare system. We also know that that dependency can move to behavior that is addiction seeking where they may begin to seek outside of their primary care provider or rather than being compassionately tapered, they begin to seek um, through means of diversion, obtaining opioids from other locations, or they move to illegally obtained um, pills, heroin, or fentanyl. And once that happens, we see individuals go through multiple rounds of addiction. And so people travel back and forth inside the healthcare system and outside the healthcare system. So when Mara brought up the fact that we talked to individuals at all different points in the system, it's because what became very apparent to us is the opioid crisis is extremely complex. It's multifaceted. And for individuals, it's impossible to look at just one point in the system.